So look, bro, another reaction video, and um, I got the right Johnny this time. So look, bro, another reaction video, and I got the right Johnny this time. The reason why I say that, if y'all haven't seen the last one, I did one on Johnny. It was the Asian Johnny, which was still dope, but the only reason why I did an underbelly video on Johnny because I was expecting to get to him right here. You know what I'm saying? Um, Ghost to Go channel, popping. Let me get 50K subscribers. We almost there. 70k forget the 50k bro we reach hot you know what i'm saying anyway y'all know this video finna be like at least an hour go get your popcorn your steak whatever you use to relax your uh 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 and your uh uh and let's kick it tonight bro or today because i don't know when i'm gonna drop this video i'm ready i'm ready mm. Mm. I'm from yeah. Santa Fe Springs, Cantarana, that's Southeast LA. I mean, Whittier and Norwalk, uh, we're the only neighborhood in two cities. We take up uh, a section of Whittier and Santa Fe Springs. So we're the only gang in, uh, in no, Southeast LA that me. occupies two cities. So that's a big. Hey. Is, is, is uh, Underbelly somebody that's from LA or is he somebody that's just infatuated with LA? Cause all his videos and most of his interviews be with somebody that's from home. You know what I'm saying? Wherever it go or whatever it is, I'm here for it. I even go on there. I'm keeping it 100. It's, it's like platforms yeah. like these. Yeah, we're a big gang. We came out in 1941. Uh, we used to be called Flood Ranch, but uh, they changed the name because there was a lot of frogs right there by the river bottom. So they changed us to Encantarranas, which in English means singing frogs. And uh, in my hood, you couldn't singing. be from my neighborhood unless you had family members. Maybe your brother, your sister, your dad, or your mom. If you didn't have nobody, no. Bro, that's my first time ever. Understand this. Understand this. You got people that call themselves the bulldog. Oh, snap. It's about to die. Hold on. Yo was about to die. But what I was saying though is you got people like the Bulldogs, the Fresno. You got people calling themselves a wolf, a lion. It's like that, right? This is the first time in my life I ever heard somebody call themselves a frog, bro. What do frogs do? Leap? That means you run it. What do frogs do? Besides, like, give people, like, warts and all that type of... Just by the name, I wouldn't have been from there. I'm not even lying. What kind of family members in the hood you couldn't get in? And that lasted till about 89. After that, went a little bit of uh, a different, different way, different... Uh, uh, somebody created an action, you know, and they, what he did was... Uh, we got at him and we let him know he wanted to get in the hood so bad, but he couldn't get in because he didn't have no family members, so... One of the guys threw out there, okay, well, bring us two bodies and you can get in. Well, he didn't bring two, he brought five in one weekend, you know. So that nigga's a crash out dummy. I be doing that, but I be doing that on my server, my GTA RP. You don't want to be from somewhere so bad to where you got to smoke somebody. You know what I'm saying? And if they big homies or wherever you're trying to be from, tell you got to smoke somebody to be from here, bro, you stupid. For one, you're going to eventually get caught. Well, in today's time, you're going to eventually get caught. For two, what if you smoke somebody and you bring them back and old boy be like, yeah, I know I told you to do that, but I changed my mind, bro. You can't be from the hood. Now you on the run for double murder. He said he brought back five bodies. I don't even know who Johnny is, but stop lying, bro. Let's keep it real. He bringing back five bodies. Five. Bad, but he couldn't get in because he didn't have no family members, so... One of the guys threw out there, okay, well, bring us two bodies and you can get in. Well, he didn't bring two, he brought five in one weekend, you know. So we let him in, you know, so he broke that tradition, you know. And that's my homie. Oh, okay, okay. Well, even though that still seemed kind of like cap to me, he said he brought five bodies back in a week. I thought he brought them all back at the same time. Like, ain't nobody living like that. Today in this world. 
I ain't just talking about the U.S. I'm talking about period. Ain't nobody catching five bodies and bringing them back to the big homie in one day? Come on, man. Demonize. And I'm still trying to call Cap on five in one week, bro. You catch Op slipping, but not that much. Today, uh, right now, he's in Pelican Bay. He's doing like about 80 years. But uh, that's, he broke the tradition, you know, so that tradition was broken. Me, I, don't really, I didn't really agree with it due to the fact that, you know, I feel that if you know somebody for a long time since, say, grammar school, they're most uh, likely not to tell on you. But nowadays that you get people from other cities and stuff, there's no type of, uh, there's no type of, uh, yeah, loyalty or, you know, camaraderie there, you know. This is what people need to understand when they start gangbanging or before they start gangbanging. Oh, yeah, they said we a family, we a brotherhood, but when you start banging, bro, 10 times, not 9 times, 10 times out of 10, it's going to be 100 to 200 to 300 fools that's from that set that you don't even know, bro. Only OGs will be dead loyal to not snitch on somebody that they don't even know. Oh, he from my gang, so I ain't going to snitch on him. Shit ain't up in today's time. Everybody getting told on, bro. If you looking to join the gang just because you need a family, you stupid. I hate seeing interviews like that, bro. I don't have nobody to turn to. So you turn to fools that don't even know you, don't care about you, send you on dummy missions. How you standing outside the dope spot with a burner just in case somebody try to break in. And guess what? You're going to be the first one shot because you're the security. Like, I don't get... I get it. I get it. I get gang banging. I do. But as far as... I'm doing it for a family types. I don't get that. The hardest bangers I know have families, bro. And I'm talking about their mom and their dad in the household. I, don't, I think that's the kind of excuse the world just be running with now. But uh, I've been from no my neighborhood since the age of 13. I've had my teardrop. That was the first tattoo I got. I got it at 15 years what old. What is the teardrop tattoo? Well, you know, it didn't represent that I had been in prison for a few years because I was only 15 and I wanted it filled in. So you mean you it really body? represents uh, when you uh, do the deed, you know. In other words, you take care of business. You put somebody in the dirt, you know. So I earned my teardrop at 15 years old. 15. And it's been on my face since then. I was of course, you can't take it off. You can't get it covered like... At 15 years old, I can't even imagine today me seeing that little fool like, bro, if you want to hang with me, you got to go smoke over there on the corner right there. Having these kids crash out. And to keep it real, when it comes to like the 80s and the 90s, the OGs, I'm talking about the people that been cripping since cripping, been cripping. The Bloods or whoever, bro. They accidentally, they subconsciously like led the youth in the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Back then, they couldn't predict the cameras. A fight going down, people pulling out their phone. Surveillance cameras. If you rob this place, you're going to get caught. The, the building across the street going to catch you robbing a Burger King, bro. So when they tell people to go out there and drill and do this for the hood, do that, that's because they was able to get away with it. They didn't have the cell phones like that. They didn't have the... Ca but today, if you're listening to anybody that tell you to do a crime, bro, they don't love you. They don't rock with you. They are, look, you are not they homie. They just want you to crash out. I was going to remove it, but my little girl, she's from my neighborhood. She's my home girl. She told me, nah, that if I removed it, it wouldn't be me, you know? So I left it on my face, you know? And I, I went to prison, did 17 years. Crash out. If you rocking with a female, not even, she said it was her home girl. Somebody tell you not to get rid of that teardrop. Stop rocking with them, bro. Because everybody know what it means, especially when it comes to the prison system, these CEOs, these probation officers, parole officers, the board, when you try to go get parole, they know what that means. Bro can get that off his face, go to parole board, try to get parole. They won't tell him, well, that's your job. Like, we ain't paroling you because of that tear job. But they stereotype, bro. You go up in there trying to get parole, what they gonna tell you? Um, yeah. Why don't you try back in three or four more years because um, what you did in the prison was not enough. That ain't even a real case. They see that thing on his eye like, bro, was a killer. We finna put him out on the society. Now, what if you didn't have a home, girl, and you got rid of the teardrop on your own by yourself? You go to the parole board. They see all the good stuff you did in prison, and you ain't got no teardrop. Go ahead and parole it. You got eight years parole. Whoa, 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 whoa. Females, man. I'm telling y'all. And y'all be putting your whole life into them. Y'all be actually... 
smoking other people for talking to your female. Y'all stop working. You want to? I don't get it, bro. Double but I've been bomb. to juvenile hall, YA. Not that bomb. I've been to a placement juvenile camp three times, and uh, I went to prison first time for uh, two counts of kidnap. Mm. And I was picked up for three counts of murder and two, four counts of kidnap. They ended up convicting me of two counts of kidnap. They gave me 15 years. I did uh, seven out of that. Right. Got out for a year, went back and did seven more straight. Got out and then went back and did four more. Bro. Right now I just barely got off parole. So right now I'm doing all right, you know, but. So you just got out? Yeah, I've been out, I've been out for about two years now. But he said he just got parole after this interview. He got drug tested, bro. It looked like he off something. If I was his parole officer and I seen his interview, I'm on the drug test. The reason why he got out the first time, he did seven years, got out there one year, and went back and did seven years. He did seven years. He got out of parole. That one year was out, he violated his parole. So they sent him back for another seven years to finish the remainder of his sentence. Because y'all heard him say, he got 15 years. They dropped the murders down. They charged him with two kidnappers. The two kidnappers that they charged him with, he did seven years, and he parole. When you parole, that means you're going to have to do the rest of your time out on the streets. That's what parole means. We're supposed to keep you for 15 years, but we're going to let you leave in seven years, and the other seven or eight years, you're going to be on parole. So if you do anything, you're coming right back. That's why he was out for one year and went right back to finish that seven years, bro, because his dumb ass did someone like stealing candy. Jay Walker, you can't do nothing when you're on parole, bro. But uh, I've been to the county here and there, you know. But the longest I did was seven years straight. Yeah. They had gave me seven years with eighty percent for a twenty stack of crystal meth. Damn. They gave me seven years for, seven that. Years for that. Yeah, they were trying to strike me out, trying to give me a twenty five to life for a twenty bag of glass. I ended up having to take a deal seven for six years. years, seven years with eighty percent. I did every seven. I did over until the last day. I was Only in there getting Latino, high. Bro. I was in there stabbing people, you know. Went to the shoe program. And then that's when I got affiliated, you know. They uh, they took me to Sacramento, they took me to pack, sent a pack. You say shoe program, uh, to those of y'all that don't know, he don't mean actual shoes. Up in prison, the shoe is spelled S-H-U, meaning special housing unit. So basically, they just put you by, it's the hole, bro. They lock you up, solitary confinement, you can't, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Come out looking like a werewolf, stinking. That's what he mean by the shoe. Back into Sacramento to see if they could, uh, you know, in other words, uh, place me with these gentlemen. And uh, I didn't have no photos with anybody in it. Bro, close the no window. I didn't have no identifying marks. One thing about me is I never got any type of marks except this one where, you know, it affiliated me. Bro, y'all doing this on the balcony because every video in Underbelly, my guy, even though I don't know him personally, rock with his interviews, rock with it. Bro. That window is there is no way you leaving it open on purpose. Where are you at, bro? Is the backdrop hiding in the city? Cause they look like they're on the backdrop right there. Is he at the top of a building with no windows? I don't want to do do he do that on purpose to make his videos look different? Do he got a button to make it sound like it's traffic in there? That'd be Cause it sound realer realer. I mean, it sound real, 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 real like this. Traffic you know, where they can see my body and say, well, that tattoo right there means something, you know. All my tattoos meant something. I got my daughter's name, my wife's name, and my frogs. Yeah, my frogs in the back. Yeah, I wanted to earn my frogs, you know. I got seven total, you know. In my hood, you had to earn them. If you didn't earn them... I wanted to, I wanted to earn my frogs. I got seven toads, though. Frogs and toads, I get the joke? <laughs> he said, my mama, I got seven total. I got seven totals. Bro, who came up with the, why the mascot of they hood gotta be a frog, bro? That's what I don't get. Like, it ain't, and I ain't dissing them, it ain't no disrespect, but damn. We got some, we got the eagles out here. We got lions, bears. What, is this a giraffe? Yeah, I ain't pick a, I got the ghost. I ain't never seen nobody pick a, what do frogs do? For real, what do frogs do? What are they here for? I mean, then we would take you out ourselves. One of my little homie ended up getting five frogs on him. He didn't earn them, so they killed him like a week later. Oh, yeah. My home. Each frog signifies what? Each represents a soul. Somebody's soul. Yeah. So once you get a soul, you can put it on your body. 
Yeah. So he said, One of my homies didn't him. earn it, so they killed him. My other homie that earned, he had a triple murder. He put three frogs on him, this guy put five. So the guy that had three killed the guy with five because he never earned them. Mainly, I was the one that used to find people that couldn't get fucked. I think this is being mature. Matter of fact, I know this is coming with maturity, bro. Gang banging is crazy when you really think about it. When you really thinking about it, bro. You gonna murder somebody because he lied about murdering somebody. He didn't say he smoked. Yo, your cousin ended up dead and he was like, I did it. No, y'all from the same hood. Bro lying about other murders. It is, but you popped him. So you can get another frog on your horn, bro. Now old boy got sick. I mean, now old boy got four because he said he had three. And do he smoke? Have five. Well, now you got four because you smoke nine. So it's the goal to have your whole body to be like frogged up. And what happened to the teardrops? Or are they trying to be different? Like, bro, we don't do teardrops. We do the to I mean, the frogs. I never heard this fool hood. And if you from this hood and you watching this, bro. The fuck is y'all problem? No, I'm <laughs> what is the what's the frog for, for real? For real. Let me know. He couldn't get found, you know. I used to go undercover. I've had my hair red. Uh I've had my hair blonde. You know what I mean? I've shaved my mustache off, wore glasses, I grew my hair long, shaved my head. I used to change my identity this, this, a lot. This is change your identity? Yes, to exactly. To protect yourself from? from? Getting found, getting caught. By who? By the FBI for a while. The FBI? Yeah, the FBI was on me for a while. Wow. They were on me for about, maybe about, to total they were on me for about 10 years mm -hmm. due to the fact that I had five family members that were those guys. And you're, you know, you could pass for Caucasian with blonde hair? Yeah, yeah, I could, <laughs> exactly. I used to cover up my tattoos with makeup. Yeah. You know, I used to do a lot of things, you know, sometimes I have my got mustache hella prison real small, tattoos. or I'll let my gold chain mustache and I'll shave it real, real thin, you know what I mean? Or sometimes I'll wear glasses. If I've had red hair before. Red hair. Yeah, I had red hair before. They were looking for me for a, they were looking for me for a double murder and I changed my hair to red. Bro, going on a run, and mind you, I've been on a run before, but I wasn't on a run for like nothing major. It's just that I had a, uh, all right, so you can have bench warrants, right? If you don't go to court, you're supposed to go to court, and you don't show up, you can have a bench warrant. Police ain't gonna come looking for you unless you're in a small town. But for some reason, I was brought up in a shooting, right? Which I didn't know about. So, not that I was a shooter, I was there, whatever the case. And um, so, the court date, it wasn't like, y'all know how people come out it's your name, whoop whoop here's your subpoena, you been served. I didn't get served or none of that, bro. They just put me in the system, said I had to be the court, right? Um, I missed the court date. So they had a felony warrant out for my arrest. Bro, like, three or four days later? Nah, I'm lying, like three or four weeks later, I had got pulled over. I had listened to what he said with glasses. If I had red hair before. Yeah, I had red hair before. They were looking for me for a they were looking for me for a double murder and I changed my hair to red. Double murder. They was looking for me for a felony bench warrant. I say that to say this. When I found out it was about three to four weeks later, but then Three or four days after that, I got caught after I found out. Let me tell you this, bro. When you, mind you, I'm going to say it again because I'm trying to tell y'all how minute it is. I was there on the bench warrant. Bro on there for a double murder. He was running. When I tell you, when the police get behind you, you think you're finna go to jail, bro. As soon as you hear sirens outside, you think they coming from you. I mean, for you, as soon as you hear the helicopter roaming outside, you think they surrounded your house. Being on the run, bro, is the most annoying, stressful, sleepless thing you can ever be doing with your life. Tay K did the race. I know, bro, it's paranoid. I'm telling you. And it is a relief. I keep on seeing people say, like, yeah, it was a relief that I turned myself in. It's a relief that I got caught. It really was a relief. I ain't have to look. I ain't think about these police no more. Me going to jail. I can't walk to the donut shop without thinking. Bro, 
I'm up here thinking the FBI got a $10 million budget on how to catch me over a felony bench warrant. <laughs> I'm not lying. I was paranoid. Like, But they ended up busting my homie. It's just that me and him had the same first name. So in prison, would you spend half your life in, right? Yes. In prison. How different is the gang world than outside? Well, during this gang, well, you know, out here, there's more room to get around. There's more things you can do and get away with because you can duck and hide and maneuver. In prison, you ain't going nowhere. You can't hide, you can't duck, you know, you got to face everything head on. The way I learned it best is if you did it, you did it. You know, there's one thing I did, they, they asked me to stab somebody, I ended up stabbing them. And then the other guy asked me, why did you stab him? I said, well, I felt it was the right thing to do, you know. But yeah, I was the type of person, if I did something wrong, well, then stab me, you know. And due to the fact that I can't... He said, hold on, bro. You did not just say can't that. hide. You can't duck. You know, you got to face everything head on. You did not just say that. The way that. I learned it best is if you did it, you did it. You know, there's one thing I did. They, they asked me to stab somebody. I ended up stabbing him. And then the other guy asked me, why did you stab him? I said, well, I felt it was the right thing to do, you know. But yeah, I was the type of person. If you felt like it was the right thing to do, you would have stabbed him on your own recognizance, bro. You just said somebody else told you to stab him, so you stabbed him. And when they asked you, you felt like it was the right thing to do. Why? Because they told you to do it? Bro didn't probably even do nothing to it. <laughs> he said, well, I felt like it was the right thing to do. How? Because you wasn't, bro, was not on your radar until they told you to go ahead and poke him up real quick. This, this dude. And if I did he, something wrong, well, then stab funny. me, you know. And due to the fact that I carried myself at a certain level, well, my punishment was severe. My, push, my punishment wasn't do 50 push-ups or do 113 burpees. My uh, punishment was they would Cookie get a knife cleaning. and maybe they would make the handle. They would make the handle about five inches long and you got the seven inch knife. So they would leave about maybe about an inch and a half out and they would stab you with that. And that's just a checking. More or less, that's just. Hold on, the mask is be doing that type of let me tell y'all a real, real fact in jail, right? Let me tell y'all a real fact in jail. Listen to me. Prison. I ain't never been in prison, but it's the same little get up, right? Listen. If you in a cell, boom, right? You got the whites, the woods in there, the blacks in there, and the essays in there. And it's finna crack off, right? You got 10 in each group. 10 in the woods, 10 in the blacks, 10 in the SIs. As soon as it crack off, you're gonna get like three to four woods that'll get cracking. With the blacks, you'll get about six to seven of them that get cracking. When it comes to the maskers, they all going. When it comes to the essays, bro, they all going. No lie. The punishment. <laughs> bro just said, they poked me up, but made sure it couldn't mess me up, so they left like this much to let me learn. Bro, we doing DPs. You got to squabble for a week straight. Bro, you... It, I, <laughs> don't Man. do that again, you know. I wouldn't get a don't beat do it down. Again. I wouldn't get regulated. Yeah, because I knew better. I had been in prison. There was no excuse for uh, this black dude bought an ice cream, and I went and got his ice cream and took a bite. Can't do that. I know better than Can't that. Can't do that. But if I did Can't take a that. bite, well, then my punishment would be severely. I was explaining that to my homie Big, right? Well, I'm not explaining to him. I was talking about it. One of my best friends, but he had mask it. I'm like, bro, if we was in the pen, we couldn't even be 100 with each other like we supposed to. We could see each other, what up, what up. But as far as us eating with each other, you know what I'm saying? Sharing food, sharing clothes, me coming to your cell, getting some of your Oreo cookies, your apple juices, and your Skittles. and That's not happening, bro. We're going to cause a major issue just because we love each other on the outs. So let's keep our distance until we get back home. That's real life. And I'm talking about, I be seeing people in the comments, that's not out here, guys. That's not out here in Boston. That's not out here in Georgia. That's not out here in Texas. I'm talking about California. That's how it is, bro. I can only speak on what I know. And to everybody else, 
That be getting mad. Ghost, why are you speaking up on Boston? You always saying above us, Boston, you always using Boston as an excuse. You're right. Because Boston is just Boston, bro. I'm not mad at y'all. It be jokes, but then it don't. But then it do. I've been saying that for like two years, right? Ghost, how you gonna do this about blah? And then Boston Richie surface. Now what? The fuck? <laughs> y'all can't say but but that's only one person now. No. I was right all along. I'm told y'all I'd be good with the stereotypes, but I'll be lying. A stereotype uh, uh Boston two years ago, Boston Richie hit the scene three or four months ago. Bleh. Bleh. Like, <laughs> Bleh. You know, I've been stabbed twice just getting checked, you know what I mean? And each time I got stabbed about seven times. But it was just because I needed to get checked in a level that I carried myself on. Bro, really accept you know, I already been in prison too. five times. There was no excuse for me, more or less. And I'm a strong believer in that. I'm a strong believer in you get punished in the, you get punished in the, in, in the we'll say, uh, at this level because you carry yourself at this level. A lot of things can be told, but you know, in a certain way. You know, there's information I can give you, but there's certain information, vital information that I can't give you. Yeah, you know, I, as in names, places, but I can speak of things I did, you know, uh, in my life, you know what I mean? And I've did it all, you know. I've, 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 I've heard about things that dudes did in prison, you know. Like I heard about a guy that they sent four dudes to stab this guy and he stabbed them all. Well, when that came about to me and they sent four dudes at me, I did the same thing. I stabbed all four of them. And they were supposed to come and get me, and I ended up stabbing all of them. Bro, up here, like, he can do what I can do. To get at me. So what they did was they didn't try it again, you know what I mean? And that was simply out of hate, out of, out of you know, people just not liking me, you know, not, not liking the way I did things. But Bro, I need somebody else for the prison. And I'm not saying that I don't believe him. I'm not saying that. But at the same time, I'm like 83%. His beliefs. That means the other 17% is cap, bro. Now, depending on this video, it can go up or go down some more. But right now, I could say about 83%. I heard about a dude stabbing four people, so I did it. You, you sure? Especially if you was that little. He was up in a prison. Size matter in prison, bro. Size matter. For the simple fact, it's no boxing ring. You know, in boxing, even though they got weight classes, to me, size, size don't matter. Anybody can get it. You throwing hands, it's, it's, it's your footwork in your hands. Are they better than the next person, than your opponent? But up in prison, bro, they use anything to try to subdue you, intimidate you, harm you, and that's with the size, bro. With that being said, bro ain't never been big in his life. I could tell by his body structure. With that being said, you, they send four people up in there to poke him up, and he got them all. And I know all four of them wasn't five foot three, 110 pounds. We saying 83% real, 17% false. But like I was saying, I was 19 years old in prison and I was running all the Sentinella and that was level four and level three. And I was only 19 years old. You know what I mean? And I was speaking to gentlemen that were 45, 50, been to prison like 10, 15 years and I had more rank than them for the simple fact was the way I carried myself, yeah, you know? A lot of that has to do with your the respect you command and, and you earn, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I went through the county jail, you know, and the first time I went through, you know, I didn't really do anything in general. I, I did my time and got out. The things. second time I went through, I went balls out. I stabbed everybody in anything, you know what I mean? And I ran five prisons, the whole prison, every yard, every dude. I was in charge of everything. Come on, man. All right, all right, all right. Come on, man. You ran at five prisons? What'd he say? He was 19 years? Come on, man. I'm 19 years old. I have more rank. Than even the 40 and 45 years old. I ran five prisons that just went down to 80%. 80%, 20% now. Like, come on, bro. And this is just me. These are my opinions, my reaction channel, bro. Y'all can watch it and then you assess the thing. If you feel like he's telling the truth on everything, then go say, you know, you weren't there. I don't know. That's why it's called an opinion. But at the same time, though, five prisons. Mm. Even fools from your, I don't know. No. Mexicans do run different, but I, I, I'm not buying. Ironwood, Chuckle Waller, Tehachapi, and uh, Delano. And I'm talking about all, all five. Every dude on there, I was responsible for all of them. And I was 23 years old, 24 years old, and there was a lot of times that dude got into it with the Muslim brothers, and they don't play, you know. The Muslims, they don't play, especially on level four, you know. And one of the little homies I left in charge because I went to a family visit, when I came back, 
this dude just totally disrespected these individuals and they wanted to take his win. Doing that, they were lifers, they didn't care, they didn't kill this fool. Right. So I had to get at the moves and guy and he's an older guy and I said, yeah, you know, apparently I heard that you wanted, you wanted someone to talk to that was in charge here. He said, yeah, can you get him? I said, well, yeah, I'm that That's guy. That's me. You know? and he looked at me, he's like, man, you know, how old are you? And I said, you know, age is but a number, man. You know, and the way I approached him was I said, excuse me, you know, it'd be highly appreciated if I can get a little bit of your time and understanding, you know. And when I pushed him in that fashion. Prison is all about respect. Prison is all about respect. I'm telling you. You go to 7-Eleven right now, somebody step on your shoe, you gotta let them keep it pushing, maybe. They ain't gonna turn around and try to address it, maybe. But up in prison, you step on somebody's shoe, you don't apologize straight to the like to the man in his face, in his eyes, bro. You can die from that. You know what I'm saying? I keep telling y'all all the time, it don't matter if you're in the house, you at school, you at work, you at 7-Eleven, you know, you up in prison. Once you disrespect somebody, or even accidentally to do, some, do something to somebody, it's on them if they trip or not. It's on them if they forgive you or not, you know what I'm saying? You could step on somebody's shoe. And um, oh my bad, my apology. They don't have to accept that. They don't. You really gotta watch how you move, bro. You really gotta watch how you move out here. Respect is everything. And if you do do it, like he said, he ain't no buster. There's a lot of people watching this video that think if you came at another man and said, Hey, can I please have some of your time? And whoop the whoop, they feel like that's belittling them as a man, but it's all about respect, bro. I don't care who you are, who you are on the outs, a lawyer, doctor, school teacher, dad, whatever. Once you go to prison, your race matters. And you better find your team real quick. You know what I'm saying? It's all about, that's that's all it's about. It's so structured, bro. Like, it's just He's a lot quicker to speak to me, you know? And he spoke to me, we resolved everything. And I had little homie removed, you know? Cause he did disrespect the man, you know? But I was 23 years old at that time, you know what I mean? And I was already running a prison, so. You know, and I got out here and I ran three cities in Orange County and I'm from LA. So, you know, when I got out of prison the first time, you know, they knew of my reputation. When I was a youngster, I earned my bones in the hood by finding the people frogs. that couldn't get found. In other words, I was the guy that they called when this guy burned the, one of the main connections and they wanted him found. Like I said, I used to change my hair color, change my name, my appearance and everything. Well, one time we had this girl, she was moving pounds of glass, pounds, moving maybe six, seven pounds a day. You're talking about meth. They talking about meth. Them cars is getting on my nerves, bro. And glasses. nobody, glasses, crystal meth. Yeah. And nobody could get close to her. So I sat back and I thought, how could I get close to this woman? You know what I mean? So what I did was I went and changed my appearance. I went and borrowed an ounce of glass that was powerful. It was pure, no bro, cutting or nothing. Like he was a master so of disguise. So I got that ounce of glass. I went to this girl's house and knocked on the door. They opened the door. I went in there and I spoke to her, you know, I introduced myself as somebody totally different because I knew she was on top of her game. She didn't want nobody to get close to her. The way I got close to her was I went in there, I got on the phone, had a fake conversation, told this guy, hey man, send that 15 grand over here, send the 10 over here. So now she's listening. So what I did was I got the ounce of dope and I threw it on the table, boom. And I told her, go ahead, man. You go ahead and try that. To you females out there, not just because you're a female, it all depends on how you carry yourself, bro. You do got them Griselda Blancos out there. You got them people that's hitters out there. You know what I'm saying? You can get your respect and it's just that, and I, it's sad to say this, it's sad to say this, bro. It is so sad I'm finna say this. But in order for you to be a woman out here and get your respect from a man, you gotta be a man out here. And what I mean by that is a mentality. Ain't no, uh, oh, I'm getting picked on because I'm a woman. Ain't no posting to Twitter. They made me stand outside in the rain because I'm a woman. You gotta swallow all that up. Your tears. You know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, yo. Your gender, you got to dumb that down. You a man out here. And until y'all figure that out, you're going to keep getting treated like the woman out here. We ain't going to have no woman king out here. All because y'all want to come into the meeting with a grip of wolves. And not saying, and this, and, and, and this, is, this is the point I'm trying to make, bro. 
You go into this meeting with all these hitters, these grimy the people that run the world, bro. Mind you, they run the world. They run the city. They run the block. They run your section. They got plug on the drug tape. You're not going to be top dog if you want to show up to the meeting with a million dollar weave, your hair, your nails is all the way out here. Just got them. Look, you did your nails so you can go to the meeting. Got you a new outfit so you can go to the meeting to meet with all the, That's not going to happen, bro. You're going to always be looked at as the woman. And I know it sounds messed up, but all the women y'all see out here or y'all hearing about in the past, the, the Harriet Tubman's, the Angela Davis, the Rosa Parks, they understood they had to be a man out here. You're going to have to... <laughs> I ain't sitting in the back of the bus, bro. By herself. No man with her, no homies, no nothing. I'm not sitting back there. Harriet... Th what Harriet did, that's something that, that, that men do. She got freed and came back for her people. And brother, but You know what I'm saying? Angela Davis, Black Panther. Do I got to keep on? I, I don't have to. I don't have to, bro. You gotta be a you gotta be a man out here. So on the way out the door, she said, buttons hey, with no fear. Dope. I said, no, nah, that's not at all. I get that constantly. You can have that. So what I did was I gave it to her. Really, I borrowed that ounce from somebody, but I used it so that she would see that that was nothing to me, because I wanted to get to the pounds because that's what she was dealing at. Nobody could get close to her. So I left the pounds there. I left her my number. She, I knew she was gonna get high. She called me about 15 minutes later. She said, Damn, this shit is pure. How can I get more of it? I said, it depends on what you want, you know? I wanted to get her up to the pounds due to the fact that she was only saying she was dealing ounces, but I knew she was dealing pounds. And it's hard so to she called me it. the following day about 10 in the morning. She tells me if I can come over. I go over and I get there. And when I get inside, she's sitting with two individuals. Now I know these two individuals have a weapon because I have a weapon myself. But what happens is she has to use the bathroom so she excuses herself. Y'all know why he said, I know they got a weapon because I got a weapon myself? Y'all know why? Because he feel like he ain't better than nobody else. He feel like if I'm going to this drug meet with a met weapon, I know they gonna have one. That's why he said that. He didn't see it. He just automatically thought or automatically assumed they got it. That's how you stay alive, bro. Think you the only one in the party with a burner? You gonna draw down on somebody like, bro, what you looking at? His homie next to him got a burner gonna smoke you. Listen to what he said, man. The following day, about 10 in the morning, she tells me if I can come over. I go over and I get there, and when I get inside, she's sitting with two individuals. Now, I know these two individuals have a weapon because I have a weapon myself. Mm -hmm. But what happens is she has to use the bathroom, you know so she excuses one, herself. So at that time, it gave me the opportunity to talk to these two individuals, which these two individuals were her torpedoes. In other words, they were used to protect her. Her bodyguard. But now I needed to get at them, excluding her. So I spoke to them in Nawa. They're and not what Nawa is, it's the Aztec language. And I knew that these dudes knew Nawa because previously I knew of one guy, his reputation and who he was. So I spoke to him in Nawa. The other one didn't know Nawa. So as I'm speaking to this guy in Nawa, the other guy don't understand what we're talking about. Well, what I'm really doing is I'm lacing this guy up and letting him know who I am, who I represent, and who I work for. Because he's unaware of what I'm doing. I'm letting him know why I'm there. I'm there to take over her business Keep him <laughs> as a torpedo, but yet I'm going to take over her business. He and better not have to agree with it. to infiltrate on what she does. So she came back into the room. Now I have one of her torpedoes on my side. Bro, Buster. Bro, Buster. You mean all it took was old girl to walk out the room for you to go ahead and flip? That's what I'm saying. You can't trust nobody. That's how Selena died. I killed my best friend. Y'all know who Yolanda is? Anyway, bro. Either old boy was like... This is bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? He run with some hitters. I just run with her. I don't want no problems. Or he just a buster and flipped on her. Either because he like him or a boy going to give him some money or he going to give him a piece of the pie or whatever. Boy, I can't stand But he's really working for her. But now this is my inside, man. This is how I'm getting in. I didn't use a woman. I didn't use nobody. I used an individual that was protecting her, and that was my way in. So what happened when she came out the shower, we talked a little bit. Now he's on my team. So what we did was we, we got her to do a deal for five pounds. And what happens was we went to a Starbucks, 
All we did was we were switching cars. She had one car with all the dope in it, and then she had another car. They were same color, same brand, mark and everything. So what happened was she ended up giving the keys to the individual who was taking care of her, but all along he was working for me. He had How he working paid. for you when you just so met him? We ended up getting her for five pounds. Five pounds. Bro took the job without getting paid. This is not a Fortune 500. This ain't Sears, Walmart to where you get. Look, I got hired today. Then I get paid in two weeks. Matter of fact, nope, you get paid in three weeks because the first week that check go in the hole if y'all ever had a job. So then you get your first check three weeks later. Bro, this the streets. You want me to work for you? I need something right now. Don't try to tell. Like, I, she, her, her bodyguards are some cold fools. Some glass. Took her out of business. That's some cold in her fools. House, took over. Made her forced to sign the house over to us. She signed her house over. She signed her car over. Matter of fact, we even kept her dogs. You know, two of her dogs that she had at home. Well, the bitch got boasty after a while. She seen us in her house. We over, took over business. We're dealing out of her house. We're selling women out of there. We're selling drugs out of there. We're selling guns out of there. Well, one day she comes back. She sits there and she's crying on her couch. Yeah. She had all this. She had pounds of weed. She had Not pounds of crying, She had bro. nice cars. Now she could lead all. She was the woman. You know what I'm saying? She had. She was the plug. Got shooters and all that. She was the woman, like how they be like, he the man, he got everything. She was, she was her. But then at the end of the day, what she do? Come back and let her gender reveal, like a baby shower. Start crying on the couch in the house you used to own. You supposed to come back with them hitters, bro. They not finna respect you or give you nothing back crying. Matter of fact, I know you used to live here, but now we finna sell you two to the homies. She came back wrong all the way down to zero. And the reason why we got this broad was for the simple fact that she worked 10 years alone on just saying that she took care of my uncle. She never sent him a dollar, but she had his backing because of the fact that once you get so big and you start dealing pounds, well, you have a lot of people that will oh, be on your so every back and call. Club. You also have motherfuckers that'll raise How your How she fake it for 10 years? Of dope, just because this girl has so much dope. Well, she had so much dope and so much cloud around her that once we took all that, we shrank her down to practically nothing. So she went from being way up here to way down here. You know what I mean? And after a while, she yeah, got he real, loved bossy, it too. real, real bossy. So what we did was we set her up. We were mom <laughs> dope. She got busted with like three pounds of dope. What? Bo, I, this is what I don't get. You see this in more... Let me tell. If you set somebody up, that means you have to tell for the simple fact, hey, police, somebody has drugs. They're going to be at this location at this time. You should pull them over and act like it's a random stop and find the work. Bro. Bro. I mean, and bro. after a while, she got real bossy, real, real bossy. So what we did was we set her up with the amount of dope. She got busted with like three pounds of dope and a dirty gun. So she got busted, they sent her away for 20 years. She just got out about two years ago. Wow. And we just let her back in, you know, because I still do my th How? <laughs> For one, they cold, for two, she's stupid, bro. Because I know, under, look, look, you gang banging in the streets talk. 20 years, you knew that bro and them set you up. So when you get out two years later, they going to go ahead and hire you again with the scandalous on their part and stupid on your behalf because, hey, they finna set you up again, bro. How she get out, bro? This 20 years is supposed to be forever. She is so, so, she's stupid, bro. Thing, but I do it from a distance now. She's I'm, I'm in charge, but I'm sitting in, I'm sitting what they call in, in, in the back line. You know, I let everybody go in the front. Dealing, yeah, you're calling your shots all you want. Yeah, you can tell them you're running everything. I don't care, you know what I mean? It's really me, but I always have a front man, you know? Like I stay to him, I tell him, I got things I the did. Right Individuals wouldn't even, wouldn't even fathom the idea, you know what I mean, of how this was done. Like I did something in three days that seven fools couldn't do in 19 months coming out of Pelican Bay. And that was with that girl. No one could get close to her, nobody could do anything. But the way I played her was, I got inside with her, I got in her business, and then what I did was, I created an army without her even knowing it. So I took everything she had, everything. You know, everything, all her dope, her money. Easy to get a woman, I got bro. A Rolex Easy watch to get a woman, bro. A herringbone chain, a brand new 2005 Nissan Pathfinder. Just with this, no physical, 
No physical harm came to nobody. It was all mental, you know, I had to get, get inside her head, you know, and that was like one of the best things I did because it earned me a lot of bones, it earned me a lot of... Frogs. You know, a lot of respect, a lot of clout, you know what I mean? And also my name got changed. I used to be Casper from Cantaranas, now they call me Johnny Casper because they want to simplify who... Bro, you still got the name, they just threw a Johnny on there as a nickname type Oh boy right here, bro, females are gullible, and that's another thing. They are so submissive to men. Every female, you could be the hardest woman out there, say you cold, cold hard, this and that. It's one, it's one dude out there, either your past, your present, or your future that can bounce you down and game you so stupid. How you doing stuff you never thought you would do, giving up your checks, bro. Stop talking to your homegirls, trying to set up your baby daddy. I'm telling you, if a dude... It's some dudes out there with a cold mouthpiece, and these females is willing, especially if the they're coming. If again. it's good, because there's five what? of us. There's five Caspers, but they changed my name to Johnny Casper. And when you're from a gang and you've been in prison, you can't change your name because if you change your yeah. name, something's wrong. Either yeah. you're hiding, you told on somebody. You just can't be from a gang and change your name. I didn't change my name. They changed my name. So now they call me Johnny Casper, JC for JC. short. JC, you know? I was this. To be honest with you, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier for the mob. I'm a soldier. You know, I've been one for, we'll say, 20 years now. But why are you not the big homie? Um, hold on, hold on. You got all these stripes. You running all these prisons. You said, "Oh, grow up." You got, how, how is you still a soldier at today's time? That's what I don't get, bro. He should have been an OG. He should have been a big homie. He said he was calling shots. How are you still a soldier? Unless you just want to do it. When you supposed to level up? When you die? Like, how How the other big... I promise you, it's big homies younger than him from his gang. How is he still a soldier, bro? He ain't that smart, maybe? Is he on drugs or something? And I've been in trouble for stating this. I've been scolded very, very bad. Verbal tongue lashing because I felt that you're supposed to go around and say, This is me, this is me, look at me. No, a real soldier stays in the cut, lays back in the cut. When it's time, you come out and handle your business, but you shouldn't put yourself on front. And I was the kind of individual like everybody else. I wanted everybody to see me, like the Teflon Don, look at me, look at me, look what I'm doing. And I wanted that. And I got scolded very, very harshly for doing that, you know. So now I necessarily don't do that unless. It has to be put out there, and I have to tell it. Like out here, in all of downtown in Skid Row, I'm the last Mexican individual that they'll come at when something needs to get done here. In all of Skid Row, in all of Skid Row, I got the I got more juice than anybody around here. And I don't say that boastfully. Is that because is bro homeless? I mean, I ain't stereotyping, but I'm stereotyping. I don't think you should boast about being a big homie of Skid Row, bro. If y'all know what Skid Row is, go look at that. If you're around there, you should be trying to help, if anything. If they put you in charge, if somebody, that just like me, bro, you're not finna put me in charge of watching a McDonald's, bro. Like, what do you think about me? Like, you, like, bro, a buster. Anybody steal some cheeseburger? How that goes? You, nah, man, I'm a hitter. I wanna go out the White House just like the rest of these fools. They got him in charge of Skid Row. You know what you see out there? You know what's just homeless people. Drug addicts, bro, and police. That's it. He. Nah. Nah. Or look at me, no, I'm speaking the real. Any black individual you'll talk to, or any Mexican individual, when it comes down to the last man you're going to talk to, I'll be the last one. So you're talking to me right now? Yeah, I'll make the final yeah, shot. Is, is this going to get you in trouble? No, or not at all. No, nah, only I can get myself in trouble, you know what I mean? So you're okay to talk about it? Yeah, yeah. You're not a no big problem, homie, you know? though. I, I'll speak about freely of what I got to speak about. Okay. I have that, no, I have that Great respect. Details, no, and I have the right to speak about things that I have did myself, you know what I mean? Things that I've accomplished shit that I have did for the cause. Bro, you just said you said I'll grow up to go to jail. That ain't even, you know what I mean? For, for the mob, cool. you know, that for certain things that I did. And like I say, out here, I'm the last man on the totem pole. When you get to the last man, you want to speak to the last individual, it's going to be me. There might be 10 guys in front of me, but the last guy you're going to speak to and get the shot is from me. I'm going to be the last one that calls the shot, you know, whether it's going to happen or whether it's not. Whether this guy got to move out of his fucking tent and get off the street. You know what I mean? I'm like one of the only Mexicans. This is what I don't get into today's time, bro. If you and, and the reason why I keep on speaking up on it, 
because I remember how it was in the 90s. If you got gangbangers on TV, especially the OGs, the big, the Tookie Williams and all that, you not finna get on TV and tell them like, yeah, I run the Crips downtown, whoop de whoop whoop and all. He getting on the internet, bro. This, this, everything he's saying, everything he's saying, he the big homie downtown, they got to come to him. Now, if it was some type of kidnapping, murder, whatever went down there, bro, the police could easily come get bro and question him. You can't say you're not from this area. You can't say you're not from this gang. You can't say you're not the lieutenant of these said blocks, bro. Why? I just don't get why people get on the internet, bro, and just boast about their criminal life or activity. Is the case closed? Cool. You can talk about it. But as far as street politics, and if you're an active gang, man, I, I just don't get it. People always ghost, where you from, ghost? You must be from multi -wolf. You must be from multi -wolf. Whether I'm from somewhere or not from somewhere, y'all will never know. I will never get on the internet. For what? After I say it, didn't what? Nothing. I'm just continue making my videos. I'm gonna continue to be 100. It makes no sense to me. It makes zero sense to me, bro. You people, people, they do this for clout. They do this for views. But they don't think about who the viewers really are. Police officers. Ex-enemies. Current homies, baby mamas, ex I, just all of Oh, I thought he was dead. Oh, now he think he on the internet. Oh, I know how to get out. Come on, bro. What is wrong with you? Seen any individuals that can sling dope anywhere right here? Really, we're we're limited to one one street town. Me, I can sling on any street, any corner, anywhere. I don't. There's certain parts I won't go. Like we'll say, for instance, San P San Pedro and San Julian, right there on sixth. I won't sell a dime bag right there, because I know better. I know that I'm not supposed to sell where these black individuals are selling. I'm limited to where actually I can sell, but me, because I got the respect and understanding of these guys, blocks. I can sell on any street corner I want. I can move on any street I want, because of the fact I know what to go through and who to get at, who runs what street. Now interview old girl, because this interview right here, bro, I'm pretty sure old girl seen it to where he said, yeah, we set her up. If she was doubting it before 20 years or something, she got the raw truth on this underbelly video. Now, let's interview her. You said she's still rocking with you. Still... She's so stupid. How can you... That, that's... Come on, man. Street. Come on, bro. Gang is kind of falling through, you know? You know, they're trying to make wax right now, you know, and they're, they're cooking it in a tent. And uh, two days ago, it blew up on them. And dude got burned all his legs, half his neck, what all his arms. Out of weed. They're getting weed in there. They're, they're draining the weed for the juices, the nutrients that are in there. And it's, yeah. What it really is, it's keef. It's the THC that's on there. But they have to boil it at a certain temperature, and you got to use a certain type of gas. You know, and if you get cheap gas, then you burn your shit, and it tastes like gas. But if you get that real expensive gas that runs you like $80 a can, you know, that shit right there burns so fine and so clean that your stuff comes back clear. And it's really clear, the clearer the better, you know? And I got two individuals cooking it right now, but one of them just blew himself up. Uh, so what's, what's the closest you've ever come Bro, shut up already, like. You've seen a lot of violence. Johnny, I rock with Johnny. I'm still at the 80, 20 percentile, you know what I'm saying? But it's like he getting on there telling everything, which makes zero sense. Bro, I got two people cooking it right now. Yeah, I'm over here doing woofy whoop. I'm doing woofy whoop right here. I'm sorry, I'm like, I. I just automatically think the FBI on me, like I told y'all earlier, I'm a paranoid type of fool to where it come to other individuals. I don't care, bro. Don't run up on me too fast. I might shoot you. I'm not even lying. If I'm looking at my... Bro, if I'm driving my car, and I swear on my mama rest in peace, if I'm driving my car, boom, I go past three lights, then I make a right. The car went past three lights behind me, he made a right. Then I go up two more blocks, make a left. Then he make a left. I'm finna pull over real quick, hop on my car, like, bro. And it'd be a lady that's like 90 years old, just happen to go the way I'm going. <laughs> like, I, you, 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 you trying to fall? You trying to get, what? I only, I couldn't put my business out there like that. That shit is crazy to me. The closest I came to dying was uh, 
a lot. Shit, I got, I got stabbed in my neck. Oh, I got my throat cut from all the way across. My throat, my whole throat got cut. They could try to carjack me in you gone through. scar on your face too, I think. Yeah, this one right here. Yeah. This was discipline. Was this one I'm proud of, yeah, this is discipline. That was just good discipline. This is to know, you know. In prison? Bro, proud of a DP. The reason you get a DP, a discipline, because you did something stupid. So you proud that you got a whooping. We get caught, and when we get a whooping, we get we, we proud of that. Like, bro, that's as close as you're going to get to a put-off. A DP is almost a put-off, but it's not. It's like we punishing you. I know grown man finna punish me, bro. I ain't. I, and it's just me. If I'm from the hood and they feel like they got a DP me, I'm not from there no more. Not even lying. Go run my face, and now I'm finna go link with the enemies. <laughs> to me. I ain't finna DP what I look like. Yeah, y'all, nah, they, we finna DP you. I'm like, no, it ain't. It just be finna be a squabble. I fuck with y'all niggas after this. Like, you go ahead and, 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 cause, nah, bro. This is saying too much. Yeah. Your name's out there too much. You know, and I did something that I knew I shouldn't have did. I was, the guy that did it, he's my best friend today. The guy that did it is your best friend today. But you just said they gave you a DP because your name is out there too much. You saying too much. They gave you that DP before this interview. I promise you, your name is more out there than it's ever been after this interview. So whatever you got DP for in the past, you gonna get it today. Especially if the dude, not if, you just said the dude that DP'd you in the past, your best friend today. You really finna get an issue. And you a foot soldier. You not an OG, you said that too, bro. He brainwashed. And he, is that why you was proud? Because your best friend did it? That's just like, that's just like, well, if, if I'm not finna let bro smoke me, even though I know I gotta die, but let my wife do it, it'll be better. That's how he feel. Yeah, I got a DP, but my best friend did it, so I'm proud of that. That's what he just said, bro. This thing, hold on real quick. Yeah, he brainwashed. Because I felt that he gave me action at remaining real, keeping real, because he could have did much, much more. But this right here, this is just a check-in. So you won't get in trouble like this for a No, no, nah, no, nah, not at all, no. not at all, no. Nah. Mm -mm. This uh -huh. one I got checked. This was for something I did wrong. This one right here, I got carjacked. They cut my throat all the way across. Dude was behind me, he had a knife to my throat, and he said, I'm taking your car, and I was like, you ain't taking your so, shit. So this, to me, Compton Cribs. To me, what I've learned Damn. from the Mafia is 10 times more. Yeah, like, they are. You respect them more than anybody God, the Crips. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. More yeah, than yeah, they're, the the, they're, the they're at the top of the food more chain. Crips, all put together. Oh, yeah, they're at the top of the food chain. They're at the top of the food chain. Yeah, I, I walk through these streets by myself all hours of the night. A lot of. He's a smoker, bro. Me, Why do you do that? He's yeah, a smoker. He get high. Streets, he get man, high. You know that there's nothing but black. I bet you he finna say everything but get high. He walked through the streets because he a smoker. I so I'm going to walk down there regardless. Give a fuck what street it is. And I walk any yard, I walk any street, any hood, you know, because of the fact that I'm not there to cause any harm. If I'm there, I'm either there to talk to who's running shit right there, to fix what the fuck they're doing, or I'm there for a simple reason. If somebody sees me in their hood and they know me, they know I'm there for a certain reason. I'm there to either talk to the guys that are in charge, or I'm there to fucking scold them. And I'm there or to smoke and some, some weapons and some money. And they're gonna give it up. You know, there's times I've walked in and, you know, uh, the individual said he knew me, he didn't even know me. But I sat there and talked to the guy, gave him a different name and everything. And then when I was tired of talking to him, I told him, you know who you're talking to? The person you said you were taking care of. So now he's in trouble. Took his car, his gun, his money, everything. I even took a dude's woman out of his house. You know, it wasn't his wife, but. 75, 25, bro, just keep going down with the percentage, bro. I have nothing on me. He knew who I was, took his gun, I took his wife out of his house. He get high. I'm not lying. Johnny is a smoker. I know one when I see one, bro. He's not just living life, 
watching Netflix, eating cheeseburgers, you know what I'm saying, doing a couple push-ups and going to sleep. Nah, bro, be roaming the streets at night, hiding a bitch. I'm not lying to y'all, bro. I'm not lying to you. was a girl that he was being with, and I took her from him right there on the spot for the simple fact that his wife. he was stating he was paying rent or less, taking care of business, and he wasn't giving a penny up. You know, and there's a lot of individuals that do that. You know, you Everything. might be selling pounds of dope, but when I ask you, you tell me you're selling dimes. And, but I already know your whole business. I already infiltrated your business. I already talked to all your clientele, took them, gave them dope. You get people who use dope, you give them dope, they'll tell you anything they want. You just keep on pumping information, so you giving them more dope, they'll tell you anything you want to know. So every time I approach somebody about a situation, I knew all the outs and ins, the rights and lefts, the ups and downs, I knew and all outs. about their business. So I was asking them questions to see how much they would lie to me, what type of false information they would give me. And a lot of nine times out of ten, they would lie to me. You know what I mean? And I would find out their line and Take I would day. decide how much I wanted to, you know, uh, text them for, you know. I so bro basically saying, if he find out anybody lying about anything, he taking everything they own, even their wife. That's why 75, 25% of this nigga. You know what I'm saying? We started at 100. But come on, bro. I don't see a smoker doing all this. I'm just being real. I've I don't been see in the county jail where that. I took a dude's shit all the way down to his toothpaste. All the way down to his toothpaste. And had him beat up three times a day for a whole month straight. You know, there's different the strokes run for different folks. You know what I mean? I've been in so many situations. Colin Kaepernick, baseball cap. Bottle cap, hub caps, cap and gowns, whatever cap you want to say, bro, he is lying. You did not have nobody beat up three times a day for a month straight. They would have rolled themselves up and got up out of there. You know what I'm saying? Somebody would have known. Bro would have been beat up every day. That The guards would have took him like, bro, you getting smacked. You like this every day for four days, let alone 30. 70, 30 now. You know what I'm saying? We was at 75, 25%. Now we 70 and 30 in this. I can't believe he just said that, bro. I done took it down to his toothpaste and had him serve three times a day for a month. How you not stuttering on all these lies, bro? I be, I be out here, what? You be stuttering, I can't, you, you can, that's a cold, you can lie on the drop of a dime like that? That's a cold motherfucker, bro. Like, you could make up a scenario in your head and not mess up on the drop of a dime, though. I'm sure. Situations, like I said, you know, I've run yeah, my gang, liar. my area, prisons, yards, um, tears, you know what I mean? I did it all. And, and nine times out of ten, you know, 98.9% .9 fools fuck up that run yards. They're no longer any good. Y'all, y'all. We got ratios. I do it all the time. How the fuck? He gets to 98.9%, .9%, bro. Let me know. What did I just... Bro said 90... Why you just go 99%? Like, he, how you get to... He high. I'm telling y'all, bro, it's lit. Right now. He said 98.9%. .9%, just say 100% or 99%. The point nine is what's killing me. You killing me, Smalls. You killing me. Good. They're S and Y now. You know they had to lock it up. And now I'm 46 years old, and I'm still on the main line. You I'm still yeah, I'm still active. Hell yeah. And around here, a lot of people are non-active. Yeah, they're, they're. But the way I do it is, I just roll through and treat an individual the way he treats me. I don't give a fuck if he's wanted by the mob or he's wanted by his hood. As long as his name don't come past me, then he's cool. You know, the other, like I used to tell dudes on yards, I used to hit yards and I'd hit a yard and the fools would see me there and they would start acting funny and everything. Finally, they'd get at me and say, hey man, I'm doing this right, I'm doing that right, I'm doing this right. I'd be like, I don't give a fuck what you're doing right here. <laughs> but I know you're here and I know that, you know, I know what's up with you, dog. I know, I'm just letting you know I'm doing everything right. I said, look, let's put it like this. The only thing you got to worry about is a kite comes with my name on the outside and your name on the inside. A kite. A kite is basically word of mouth. A kite is basically a letter. A kite is how other prisons keep in contact with each other. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, inmates can get on the phone, the prison phone, 
and then call another prison phone <laughs> on the other side of California. Like, hey, let me talk to Wu Du. That's not the case. Messages get delivered on the outs. Messages messages get delivered by cell phones. Or if you're up in the same prison, somebody up in the shoe, they can't get it out. You got letters that you can slide them. You got guards that's delivering mail. You got all that type of shit. And what he mean by the, that's what he mean by the kite, not an actual kite. So he's saying everything is 100. Everything was 100. Just don't let. The last prison that you just left from send a kite over here say you was doing some thirsty shit. And then we're going to have to roll you up and smash you, bro. So for now, you 100. But just don't let them kites come back. Because then we're going to... thing you got to worry about. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, you're cool. Just remember, if a kite comes and it has my name on the outside and your name on the inside, yeah. or you're in trouble. Yeah. A kite is, a, in other words, a, a note. You know, they send you a note. When he said my name on the outside, a kite is supposed to go straight to him. Nobody can open it. Your name is on the outside. It's not getting passed through anyway. What he said, what he mean by my name on the outside, your name on the inside. When I get it, it's mine, my name on the outside. But in the kite, they're not going to say, hey, do you want a smoothie today? How is your day going? How are your kids? It's not going to be on the kite. A kite is basically going to be a hit. So if he open that kite up, if he open that letter up, your name is on the inside, you're done. You done, bro. And if he don't get you, somebody else will. That kite don't go away. You know what I'm saying? It don't. Dude might get it, write it in, in, in the shoe program, hoop it up his ass, yep, shoe take program. it to Delano, pass it off to somebody in Delano, puts it in his ass, brings it to me, and it's a no for me, but it came all the way from the Bay. And I might be down in Delano. It took mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. two months to get to me, mm -hmm. but it got to me though, mm -hmm. you know? And it was probably transported in four fools' asses. <laughs> you know, and that, but that's how it is, you know? And then it's written maybe on a piece of paper the size of those little yellow tablets. But it has like five pages in a book. That's how small the writing is. Some guys can write so small. I can't believe how small they can write. I can write small as fuck. Yeah. Small, real small. I can put on. I can write you a whole letter on just a a, a wrapper of a gum. Your gun wrapper. The gum wrapper. Just the white piece that big. I can write. I can tell you a whole story on there just by writing. You know, it's it's you you become to be able to write so small with so small of a pencil and then fold it. I speaking of the gum wrappers. Uh, back in the days, what they tell me about a little up in the pen, bro. You know how you get the gum wrapper and it's for you on there, but it then be paper on the inside. People will scrape off the for you and use that as a zigzag. But that was back then when you can, you know, that when they had cigarettes in prison and stuff like that, bro. They 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 didn't took cigarettes out of prison like 15, 20 years now, but. That's how I used to be, where he talking about that little small. I used to stick it in my nose. That's how small. I used to stick like four kites inside my nose all the way back in my in my uh, nose cavity. And not to proud or boast and brag, but the biggest thing I've ever hooped was like a nine-inch knife. You know, and oh. I actually felt that shit poking me right here. So he can take bite. Yeah, I had to, I had to sit down on one. Actually, if I rolled like this, <laughs> I'd actually feel. <laughs> but you've been to the pen seven plus seven plus four years, bro. This is not a story you should be telling right now. Should we fast forward this or no? Well, he is talking about a letter, so it's just that, uh, bro. You can it poking my spine, you know. And we're talking about. Yeah, he was in it, uh, we're talking about just picture a banana, you know. Come on, and, chill. You know, picture that. <laughs> Very bro, very chill. Very, very certain way you have to do it. There's Come on, way. bro. He going to it's a certain way. Uh, it's your body uh, when you put it in. <laughs> as you have it in, say I'm gonna hoop a knife. First thing I do is I wrap it in plastic, wrap it in plastic, wrap it in plastic. Then I get a, an eraser from a pencil, and I'll stick the eraser right on the tip. Then I'll tie it so fucking tight so. that. If I gotta take it out of my ass as soon as I pull it out, bow, 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 chill. All the plastic shoots back, boom, and I got nothing but the blade. Now remember, once I hit this guy, I have to rewrap that and hoop it again. I gotta recycle. When you say put it up your ass, you mean literally? Yeah, I mean hoop it. I mean keister it up my ass. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We'll say fucking the birthday card. The birthday card is a birthday card is slang for. Uh, everybody's information, your name, your number, your what they call you, your hood, your court dates, what you're busted for. You know what I mean? Bro, how y'all call, call that? Y'all call that a birthday card? All one line is all your information. There might be a hundred guys on one piece of paper that I have. 
And I've been to places where they call it a birthday card. We call it a G5. 9596. They'd give you a piece of paper with 25 names on it. And you have to memorize these names. Every fucking name, every fucking hood. And then you get a knife, you coop it and go to, you hoop it, hoop it, key straight, and then go okay, to the Okay, bro, we understand. And you have to remember every individual that was on there. Because if one of those individuals slip through and you don't get them, your it's ass on is you. grass. It's on your you. ass is grass. Then on top of that, remember you keister that eight inch knife. You all right, all right, all right. Another I, I just raping myself. Seconds. You know, to be honest with you, that's what I was doing. Come on, bro. You, you come on. You know what I mean? And then they got 15 individuals, and they're just going to pick who everybody has a knife on them. But they just pick who they want to pick. They find you with that knife, that's another charge, another five years. So you're taking a, you're taking a, a, a risk just taking it. But the way they used to do it was yeah, you, if you were you, from you, the you, age you of 18 to 35, Mandatory you take a weapon. Mandatory you stab anybody on that list. But if you're 35 and older, you don't have to take one. But if you're from 18 to 35, mandatory you take a weapon. Yeah. But in certain courthouses, Norwalk Court, CCB, you know, Long Beach, there was only certain courthouses that you can take them to because they wanted certain individuals hit. You know, and, they wanted, and you had to take it with you all day. You're responsible for that thing. You lose it, it's your ass. You know, you lose it, you're going to get stabbed. You know what I mean? And I mean, it was so, so on key in there that I can have a knife and you can be seven, seven cells down and there's noise going on talking to me. I dropped that knife and it would hit one time. Bing! And I snatch it. Within seconds, you would hear, shoot a name. Dude heard me drop the knife one time and all it did was just hit the cement once and I snatched it. He heard that little bing and it's shoot a name. And when you shoot a name, I dropped it. By the time I shoot the name, my name, these individuals and myself are already putting their shoes on. Mm. I'm already getting knowing what's ready. Happening. Getting I'm ready. Getting ready. Get a full force south side, and that's 39 seconds of getting beat down at full force, okay. kicking everything. All five of your cellmates are gonna beat you up. Well, yeah, and you might have been with these cellmates for fucking three years fighting your case. You know, the next day they might have to kill you. You know, I've been where. They've been, these dudes have been together for like five years. They got drunk. They got disrespectful. And they had to have to kill this guy in the cell, you know? Mm. And they've been with this dude for three years, you know? But they had to kill him, you know? And then some guys are not just going out like that. There's individuals that, I mean, you used to have them 80 times. And they're still standing up. And they're telling you, hit him until he's on the ground. He's like, he don't want to get on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> down. It was, it was some like, bro, what you think I'm trying to do? You think this is fake? This fool is not trying to go down. That's look, look. If you're doing crime, be prepared for this. Cause I promise you, when you go to jail, when you go to prison, they don't separate them like y'all think they do. If y'all thought they do, oh, you only stole a car, you go over here with the carjackers. You stole candy, you go over here with them. You beat up your girl, you go up here with them. You took a life, you go over here with them. Nuh uh. The person that took a life is gonna be in the same cell with the person that's stealing candy. It's gonna be in the same cell with the person that stole a car. Remember that, bro. Y'all not ready for this. Half of y'all, especially, and I'm talking to the kids out here, everybody that's like 21 and under, bro. Listen to me. You're not gangster, you're just bad, bro. Don't think you, don't think you, you just bad. You outside doing whatever. You not the hardest from your, you are not a gangster. You are just bad. Tell your ass to school somewhere. I'm telling you, because it's real gang. They don't be ready for it. They don't be ready for it. And, I, and just like everybody else in prison, you don't think you're going to get caught. When you get caught, you get that humble experience. Then you'll see what's up, bro. Then you'll see what's up. I'll be telling y'all, y'all got to, you got to, I'm 34, live, live to my age. I'm so happy I'm here. I get to talk about all that shit. I'm smart enough and wise enough not to even, I got my own shit. I'm, I'm killing the robbers now. Like, I mean, I ain't did it, but I don't, don't, this ain't no lick. I will pop you, bro. I ain't even, <laughs> like, you, this what? This to hit him 180 what? times. He was not going to the ground, and they wanted him on the ground. And I said, hey, pff, he's not going down, bro. We, we, we could sit here and we could stab him all day. He is not going to the ground. And the, the initial, the initial, uh, uh, they shot the initial kite and they said that they wanted him laid out. Well, the individual's not going out, man. He's not laying out. I don't care for what we're doing. We're trying to do everything to him. He's not falling. 
this individual never fell. He never fell. He stayed up on his feet. Mm. Must have hit him 180 times. Mm. And that was because he owed $50 for heroin, and they were calling him to catch the chain to prison. Ain't no joke. Bro said $50. But before he went to the state, Bro said fifty dollars. And just because he bought, but that's the chance you take. It's a two-week period. I got sentenced. I'm ready to go to prison. Within those two weeks, I can buy dope. But I better hope that one day don't come up where they call my name, and I owe, so, I owe two. I owe fifty dollars here and fifty dollars there. Okay, well, for each fifty, you're gonna get hit five times. So you're gonna get stabbed ten times. Then you can catch a chain and go. So you know, you just say I owe three fifties. Well, I'm getting hit 15 times, and the way we can do the math, bro. The, the knife, and they would cover it up and leave maybe no more than three inches, because it takes three inches of pre three pounds of pressure and three inches of knife will kill you. Anything below that won't. So two and a half inches won't, two inches won't, inch and a half won't. But once you get three and up, it's killing, because it only takes three pounds of pressure and three inches of steel to kill an individual. You know, so mainly they might shoot five dudes each knife and everybody got like an inch and a half. Mm. Me, I'm the type of individual, I'll, I'll stab a fool in his ass. You know, that's more of a check. And instead of skinning his face or his neck, anything visible, no, I'd rather stab him Bro, in the Bro, why you keep talking about the, I don't. That's that way every time he goes to sit down, I, uh, you know, fuck. You know what I mean? He's knowing shit that did that, you know, and it's really not visible. Yeah, I stabbed the man in his ass like four different occasions, you know, and it's a friend of mine, you know, but. 65-35. Well, <laughs> just that 70-30, bro. Now you up here, you did it on four different occasions. Ain't nobody, like, butt hunting like that. Like, you ain't. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. Y'all said this was the right Johnny. Damn, y'all just say it was capping his rap, bro. This fool out here, like, just... Like, I asked it's a, to stab my his opinion. ass because they wanted him stabbed well, 15 we times. 65, you know, they, they shoot you in order, like, okay, I want you to stab the guy 20 times. All visible. Visible. Now, they want visible means with clothes, they want to see the holes in this guy. Okay, well, you're telling me to stab the guy 20 times, make him visible, but you don't want him dead. That's, I can't promise that. I can't. Yeah. You know, when, when you work, when you work for the mob, you know, and you decide to take that, that step, you have to remember that there are some things they're gonna ask that you're not just capable of doing. There's times they asked me to do certain things, and my answer was no. And they're like, "What do you mean, no? No, I, I'm, I don't. I'm not. That's not me. That's not my bowl of fucking." Wax, you know what I mean? I, I don't I don't rob stores. <laughs> I don't rob people. If people say that's not my cup of tea, he said that's not my bowl of wax. Whoa. He really got no, a farm, I think. Talk to him and let them know. Bro, you know, really got a farm, I think. Okay, I can do that. But I'm not the type of individual to get a gun and rob a liquor store. That's not in me. I can't rob you on the street corner. That's not in me. But now I can go to someone else and keep pointing and watch the door while he does the deed, I can do that, you know, I can go find somebody, I can go take somebody's win, but I'm just not the type of individual, give me your money, it, it's not me, I'm not, that's not me, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't made for that, you know, I wasn't cut, I'm not cut from that type of cloth, I'm more or less cut from the type of cloth where, uh, for instance, when I was a youngster, you know, I've never been jumped, ever, and I've been caught, 15 dudes catch me, but, Always because when I caught people, I might have 15 homies with me and catch one individual and I'll tell them, don't run. We're not gonna jump you. I'm not gonna allow my homies to jump you because I was always the one in charge. So I say, I'm not gonna allow them to jump you. I'm gonna fuck you up. You know, it's just gonna be me, you one on one. Don't worry about nobody getting in. I'm letting my homies, don't get in. Yeah, I did that. I'm gonna beat this individual up. So I'd whoop his ass, boom, everything be, send him on his way. And then maybe two weeks later, I'd get caught by him and his homies. And they jump you. And they're gonna jump me. And dude would step up and say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Nah, we ain't jumping him. You're gonna get down with my homies. No problem. You gotta be okay, solid, because nine times out of ten, they're like gonna jump you if you seven, get juiced. Eight times, you know and I tell them, they, just, they tell me, but they got jumped. I told them, I've never been jumped, bro. Oh, you never got rushed by a gang, guys? Yeah, I've been surrounded by like 30 motherfuckers. But because of the fact what I did in the past, came back to haunt me, but in a good way. And dudes are like, nah, we ain't gonna jump you, homie. I know who you are, man. 
these motherfuckers that caught me, you know, and now it's very far with my homies. And you didn't jump me, you let me go ahead with your homies, so I'm gonna give you the same action. So a lot of times that has been, that has fell right in front of me where I thought I was gonna get my ass beat by like 20 motherfuckers. And it only took one individual to step up and tell his homies, nah, this motherfucker right here, cat, he chance to kill me, he could have killed me. He was 100. Me. Nah, we're gonna give him action just like he gave me, you know, and a lot of times it has saved my life, you know. A lot of times I beat him up, you know, there's like 20 of them, I beat up like five of them. And they're like, they wanna jump me so bad. 60-40. 60-40. It ain't no way. You giving 20, 20 dudes come up. You giving one of them a fade. You beat up old boy. After you just admitted that they said, man, you looked out for me. I'm going to go ahead and give you the fade. So you end up fighting him, beating him up. Now you on to fighting five more. And you beat all them up. Mind you. The first dude. You gave him a head up, so he gave you a head up. By you saying you beat up the rest of the five of his homies, I promise all five of them to say, all right, we'll give you five more head up, face. No, they jumped you, bro, and you beat up everybody? And so after you beat up the other five, since it was 20 of y'all, six is excluded. The one the one-on-one -on -one fed you caught and the five people you beat up. What the other 14 homies do? You see their other six homies get beat up by this one dude? No, this is unexplainable. I'm calling cap 6040. This is crazy, bro. It's no way. One on one fade, bro. Let me tell you like this. I think it's noble to go ahead and give somebody a one on one fade. I'm keeping it real with you. Not, not listen to me. If these are your ops, your enemies, it's 10 of y'all, only one of him, it's okay to jump me, whatever here, out. But say it's 10 of y'all, right? And then your boy see his baby mama brother that he got into it with at the morning. It's 10 of y'all. You let them catch a head of fate. You don't jump into that. That has nothing to do with you. That is a personal beef, bro. By him saying this, cap. I'm not even lying. Bad, but this dude's like, their homie cap. that's running shit. It's like, nah, we ain't jumping this fool, man, because this fool don't. And his other homie would vouch and say, yeah, dog, he did the same to me. He caught me, but he didn't jump me. Whooped my ass, but he didn't jump me. You know, I used to whip motherfuckers ass on the daily. So did they jump you or not? Now I'm confused because you're saying that you caught five more phase. But then you're saying that they said, we ain't going to do nothing, just let them catch it one-on-one. -on -one. You know, that was my, that was my, my reputation in 60, my hood. 60-40. I wouldn't jump a motherfucker, try to run a motherfucker. 60-40. Nah, I'm going to I want to go head up because we no, went 60, 40. 9, 10, 11, 12. You used, to, you used to have to go through the boxing club. And then once you turn 13, you can get in the hood. But that was a tradition we went through. So every one of my homies went through the boxing club for three, four years. And the reason it's four years, because in four years you fight the Hawaiians. And then once you beat one or two of the Hawaiians, we do the boxing club alone and get right into the hood. And I was never jumped in. I, I, I just walked in my hood. I jumped in everybody else. So, you know, I've never, my homies have never. I don't even want to. I'm going to get at y'all on the next one, bro. Underbelly, y'all wanted it. This is the real Johnny. Johnny Cap. They say they call him JC. We're going to say that stuff for Johnny Cap. And yeah, bro, I'm going to get at y'all on the next one. 100.